Hello folks, Papa Top 912 coming at you today from the kitchen and I have a very, very special guest. That's right, somebody y'all hadn't heard from in a while and I told her the people have been looking for you. So you got to get down here and get on camera before they think that I done got rid of you. Because <laughs> you're not the only one to watch murder mysteries. So anyway, we got a special guest today and it is... Mama Top 912. That's right, y'all. Mama Top 912 has made a special guest appearance. Cost me a mint to get her down here, but we ain't going to talk about that. Now, the recipe that we're going to cook for today is going to be... Rutabagas. That's right. Roots and bagas, people. This is a staple that we grew up on down in Savannah. And you can have it two ways. You can These are really just yellow bottom turnips. So if you get you some turnip greens, you just go ahead and cook those, put them in the pot with them. But also, as you can see, these are the mangoes here. And when you get these mangoes, you just make a pot of rutabagas all by themselves. That's another way that you can eat them. And that's how we're having them tonight. So I got two gigantic rutabagas. And that's going to be enough for a couple days to eat off of. Normally, if we have these in the weekday, I'll just cook one. But it's Easter Sunday, so I'm making a bigger pot. Because I don't plan on cooking that much more this week while we're on quarantine. So, we got the two rutabagas, and you know me, when I'm doing my vegetables, I don't like to have a lot of things in there. I just like to enjoy the flavor of the vegetables. So, my base ingredients that I do when I'm cooking vegetables is always salt, pepper, butter, sugar, in different proportions. And for this particular case, you can see I have the salt, pepper, and the sugar there. Instead of the butter, I'm going to be using the fat from this pork jowl meat. Now, if you don't know what jowl meat is, it is bacon that's made from the pig's jaw. I like to call it bougie bacon because it's not a lot of it on a pig. So it costs a little bit more, but it tastes so good. It's like very satiating when you eat it. So I'm going to get that jowl meat. I'm going to dice it up and then I'm going to render it down in the pan, render that fat out of it. And it's going to turn into little crunchy little bits like bacon. But once I cook it with the water and stuff, it will tend to get soft again while we, while and it's cooking. But if you want to have that for breakfast sometime, you can just render that fat out of it and just eat it like regular bacon. Just a change of pace for you. And then also when I'm doing my long cooked vegetables, I like to use a little bit of garlic for some flavoring. So once I render down that jowl meat, I'm going to mince up that garlic, probably about a third of that garlic right there. Just mince it up. Put it in the pan and just let that infuse the oils and then once that's done we'll put those rutabagas in the pot put a little bit of salt pepper a little bit of that sugar now you see the sugar that i'm using today this is um natural birch xylitol it is another sugar substitute that you can go with and you can see in there it's very crystallized it looks like you know bigger particles of pure cane sugar kind of like coarse ground sugar that you want to sprinkle on top of like pies and cakes and stuff like that but i'm going to use that one in this dish here because i got several different ones and i like to mix them up so i'm going to go ahead right now get off camera i'm going to cut up the rutabagas mince up this meat here prep up that garlic then we'll move over to the stove and this whole meal prep time and everything for this dish is no more than about 45 minutes to an hour It'll probably be closer to an hour here because I got two of those rutabagas and they're pretty large. But they cook down really fast, so it's a good thing you can cook. It's more than a 30-minute meal, but it's still a quick dish that you can cook up when you just want a good earthy vegetable to eat. So, enough of this rambling. We're going to bust down this food and see y'all over at the stove. All right, guys. So, as you can see here, we got these rutabagas. They're diced up. That's about your average size there. I do cut my rutabagas asymmetrical so they're not all the same size. That way, I like my vegetables to have a little bite, like a little bit of crispness to them, but I also like some of them to kind of mush up to kind of thicken up the uh, the fluids. It's like when you're making a pot of beans, you know, right when those beans, right before they get done, you just take a couple spoonful of beans and smash them on the side of the pot to break them down to just kind of thicken up your gravy a little bit. That's what some of those smaller ones will do. They will kind of disintegrate and mush up to thicken up the gravy, or but it's not really a gravy, but you know what I'm saying. It'll just thicken it up a little bit, and then you got the bigger pieces that are still going to hold their body. 
Then we got the pork jaw meat diced up. And then we got the garlic over there diced up. So we're gonna go over to the stove now. I got the pot already started. We're gonna just drop this jaw meat in there, start rendering it down. Once it gets to the point that I like it being done, I'll show it to you. Then we'll put the garlic in. Only need to cook it for about two minutes with the garlic. Let it infuse the oils. Then we'll pour in those rutabagas, put in some fluid on top of them, and season them up with the seasonings and just let them cook. So see y'all back at the stove. All right, y'all. So I just put the jaw meat in. So what I want to do is just get it laid flat so it's a single layer across the bottom of the pot. And then all we're going to do is just let this thing render down. I'm telling y'all, this is some delicious pork bacon here. Very delicious. I almost want to say it's sweeter, but it's really not. But it is good and it's worth the money. So we're going to just let that render down. And they're going to turn to little crystallized particles as all that fat renders out of it. And then we'll put that garlic in there and keep the process going. All right, guys, welcome back. As you can see, that jowl meat has rendered out all of that fat. And we got those little sticky crystals now. They're sticking to themselves. So that's what we wanted it to be. You see how shriveled up they become? You know, over half of their volume is turned into that oil. Now we don't need all of this oil, so I'm going to strain this oil off most of it because I don't want to put the garlic in there now and then strain it after I put the garlic because I'm going to lose some of my garlic flavor. So I'm just going to pour most of this oil off into a bowl. So see, I still left some in there. And that's what I'm going to use to start breaking down this garlic. garlic don't take but a moment to break down you don't want to burn it so it's going to fuse that oil and if I need a little more of the oil after I put the stuff in I can always pour some of it back in there I just didn't want to have all that oil inside of my rutabaga pot so we're going to let that render down for about another minute or two and don't worry about that pork jaw getting crispy you can see it sticks to itself and don't worry about it being crispy because like I said once you boil it down it's gonna get back soft when in that in that water so as long as you don't burn it you're gonna be a-okay and I like to keep it moving when I put that garlic in I like to keep it moving all right you see my garlic starting to get to be crispy garlic but it's bigger pieces so it's not really crisped up but the outside is starting to get that caramelization on it so that's right there where you want to stop it well you're actually not stopping it because i'm not going to turn the fire down but we are going to go ahead and put these rutabagas in i've already rinsed them and i got some water in the bowl so that's going to slow down the cooking process Some water in there so you see now I got my rutabagas in here and it's not enough water to cover them so I'm gonna put just enough water in this pot to cover them not really worried about the fact that all the garlic and stuff is on the bottom because once these things soften up a little bit and I stir It'll then blend up, but it's in the water and it's going to flavor the water. So that's not a problem. So. Now, I'm just going to add a generous amount of salt, pepper, and sugar. This is that xylitol. I'm just going to put two tablespoons in there and then the salt I just sprinkle some across the top and the 
same with the pepper. Now rutabagas to me, they lend themselves to wanting a, a heavy pepper flavor in them. But I do my pepper in layers. I'll put this in here. I'm gonna let this cook off about 20 minutes. And then I'll come back and taste it and I'll adjust the seasonings at that point. Because a lot of times, as soon as you season to something, the flavors don't have time to intensify and then you add more and all of a sudden it's too peppery or too salty and stuff like that. So, take a quick little taste here. Mm-hmm. A hint of sugar, hint of salt, not much pepper. But like I said, I'm gonna let that pepper break down in there first before I put more in there. But I can taste the garlic and I can taste that jowl meat. So, don't do that at home, people. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on this and just let it cook for about 20 minutes. And we'll come back and show y'all what our progress is. All right, folks, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. So, here we go. Take that lid off those rutabagas. And these are done now. I'm gonna show y'all what I mean. I'm gonna take one of these rutabagas out. And you can just stab it with your fork. And it has enough, it's, that fork went right through it, but it has enough body that it'll hold in place so it's not too soft but it's not chewy either and you can just take them and mash them up so how that fork went through there like that that's the doneness that i like my rutabagas like i said some of the smaller ones are going to be like that one i just pressed up against the pot and some of the other ones i'm going to be able to just stick the fork through but you just want to stick the fork through with no resistance kind of like a when you're cooking a potato so I did come back at the 20 minute mark, but I had nothing to share because the seasoning was perfect in the mix. So I didn't need to add anything. All I need to do was just let these things cook. So you can see that, that garlic right there and then all those little pieces of uh, jowl that was nice and crystallized. It's done turned to little nice chewy pieces of uh, ham almost, just like ham meat now. The fat's been rendered out. So that's just like little pieces of ham meat. So. That's everything that goes into this little pot of rutabagas. All we need to do now is just plate this stuff up and have our Sunday dinner. So, it's Papa Top 912 with the rutabagas recipe, and I'm signing off.